What's up everyone? This is Marsman here and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video is the Marsman news, biggest gaming news topics of the week. And like always, I need the Marsman crew along with me to tackle this major task. And this is a special episode. It, this is like the this is like the Christmas of gaming because basically before the holidays hit around, this is where all the game conferences come out. This is the replacement of E3 this year where basically all these gaming companies get to show off what games are coming out for the rest of the year as well as for the future and there's been so many news topics as well as some very spicy stuff we're going to get into later uh but first things first i gotta reintroduce the mars man crew to my left is haki what's up guys and to my right is langelikill what's up everybody so don't worry guys i'm not sick my voice has been lost a little bit but i i don't worry i'm all good guys but when we first jump into this, this is a brand new, obviously a whole new video series that we've been starting up, gaming news, Marsman news here. And, you know, we try to cover the biggest topic, uh, biggest topics of the week. And, and sometimes things is always ongoing. So as we talk about the news, some new things might be dropped and we try our very best to be up to date with our news topics. But if something is, is rumored or posted just as we po edit this video, please do not hate on us. We try our very best to cover everything. But let's get started with the biggest news topic of the week and i'll start off with the sony state of play and basically sony came out with their conference so their e3 conference where basically they're going to be talking about the biggest games that they had work in the works as well as things coming to either exclusively to sony or work being worked on or shown first by sony and essentially there's a lot of games that were talked about we saw resident evil 4 remake which was multi-plat a spider-man remaster which was going to ps5 the PC, Horizon Zero Dawn updates, which are updating the game, UI, and things like that. We're getting uh, Horizon Call of the Mountain, which is a VR game. Callisto Protocol, which is a multi-plat. I originally thought it was an exclusive, but it's a multi-plat that is made from the same man that made Dead Space, which is a horror game. Uh, roller, Do oh, roller, <laughs> roller Drome, which was a kind of rollerblading, kind of like everyone's fighting each other. That's going to be exclusive to PS5. New PSVR games, including Resident Evil 8. Uh, which I think is also coming to the Oculus uh, devices as all the meta devices you want to call it that now. Um, we have Season, A Letter to the Future, which is multiplat. It's like a story, a kind of story role playing game. Uh, uh, I think it's Eater Nights, which is a, a act action game that is also a dating sim according to PS5 and Sony. Uh, we also have Street Fighter 6 multiplat, which is obviously a famous fighting game. Final Fantasy 16 which it seems as if this is a exclusive to PlayStation, which is obviously a big deal. And then Stray, you know, the cat based simulator that you're, you're a cat living in Cyberpunk's Night City. Um, so the big question I kind of want to ask everyone here is what is your biggest positive takeaway with the Sony state of play? And I'll, I'll start it here first. Um, my biggest thing is pro probably going to be Resident Evil 4 remake. I mean, in my opinion, I thought Resident Evil 4 was probably the most popular of all the Resident Evil games. Now, granted, Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2 were classics, and they were the original horror-based games that got everyone hyped for the series in the very beginning, but Resident Evil 4 took that and made it into an action game, and it got everyone excited because you had that mix of horror aspects, and then you had some action added into it, and based on the reports, it seems like this is going to be kind of I can't tell if it's going to be a reimagining of the game, but it's they, they are claiming that this is going to have some redone voice acting lines, and I think they're going to rework some of the, you know, obviously movements and stuff. But by all means, Resident Evil 4 Remake was well-deserved. It's been a game that uh, is legendary, but the one thing that I'm still concerned about is the price point. We all know that the price is going to be high, but in my opinion, if it's a remake, exact copy, just updated graphics, it should not be $70. Let's hope and pray that it's not, but God knows what. But let's start hockey with you. What is a positive takeaway that you have from this Sony state of play? Yeah, so I thought the positive takeaway was the VR. Um, I think I think virtual reality, and I think everyone probably knows virtual reality in 20 or 30 years is going to um, you know, probably be the main focal point um, of video games. So... I thought the Resident Evil and I really thought Horizon Call the Mountain looked pretty fire. 
um, you know, I've seen, I'm pretty sure Mars, man, you've made a couple, uh, horizon streams, right? Yep. With the new one. So, um, I thought this VR one was, was pretty cool. Um, so I would, I would go ahead and say the biggest takeaway for me was, uh, taking a look at the, you know, the upcoming VR games and how, you know, good they are right now or the ones that are coming out. And then obviously the, the future, you know, tells all. So. Yeah, I agree. Listen, I think VR is a really interesting concept. Now, VR for me, I do have an Oculus Quest, um, but and I tried to get an Oculus Rift, but it broke the, literally the first week I had it. Um, but VR is a really cool, you know, kind of. Uh, I called it a, a niche on the on the state of play reaction video I had, which uh, is going to be located in the description below if you want to take a look at that. But it is a very interesting niche, and there are some cool games out there. Uh, for the VR, so I agree with you. I think VR it could be a really cool thing. I'm sure down the line you're gonna get to see more VR and more advanced VR. But Angelica, what is a positive takeaway that you have? Yeah, I kind of agree with Haki about the VR. I think that was kind of like the big message um, that that I took from this state of play. But uh, the the one I think slightly above that is Final Fantasy. Um, I know Resident Evil is obviously the big uh, talking point, but. Um, the rumors are about Final Fantasy, at least starting off on PlayStation. I don't know if it's going to be a complete exclusive, but I think it might start off on PlayStation and then get on to uh, Xbox. Um, but nevertheless, I thought Final Fantasy looked pretty cool. I actually really liked what I saw. Um, and, you know, Final Fantasy, at least to me, there is a lot of hit and miss with it. Um, but the last couple of Final Fantasies have been really strong. Uh, for Square Enix. So to me, I thought that looked pretty, pretty interesting. And in my opinion, probably the biggest gun that was shown uh, at the PlayStation State of Play. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, this PlayStation usually has these big drops, right? And Final Fantasy kind of seemed like that was their shocking drop that they had. And I think a lot of people were, to, I think, you know, when you ask everyone, even us, was Final Fantasy going to be a, an exclusive? Because that is something that is a pretty big deal because Final Fantasy games like like you said, Angel Kill have been pretty solid. I mean, I I really enjoyed Final Fantasy VII remake. I thought that the previous Final Fantasy XV was really good. Um, and and, and honestly, I like the combat. The style. online, a lot of people really they like the online. The online yeah. yeah, and 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 honestly, it's been going up and up. Generally, Final Fantasy games have been hit and miss sometimes, but they've been just hitting it in stride. Square Enix at least is making some games. I mean, you know, they they everything other than Kingdom Hearts. But yeah, let yeah, yeah let's. That's they gotta give them their due. Yeah, let's give them their due. Final Fantasy's been rocking. They gotta give them a lot of credit there. But let's talk about the negative. And my biggest negative is the lack of God of War Ragnarok. I think this was the best chance for you to really drop drop a bomb, right? Drop a bomb, and and I get it. I'm hearing all the rumors, and it's everyone saying rumor, rumor, rumor. IGN saying it. GameStop, Bloomberg reporting that all this is rumor. But God of War Ragnarok is coming out in November. But I want. Why didn't you show us some gameplay? Why didn't you show us something? And I still don't believe it yet. I think honestly, if they were so confident that this is coming out this year in November, they would have dropped something. How is it possible that most likely that Xbox is going to show Starfield gameplay at their event on on you know in, on Sunday uh, on the twelfth of June, but God of War wasn't shown a single inch, right? And that's coming out this year. Now, unless they're having a massive, a massive hyped up event just to go over God of War alone on a later date, I, I really don't see it happening. And and, I, and I, I am upset about it because God of War is a great game. It's a great series. And this is Sony's chance to take the limelight because Starfield gets delayed. Breath of the Wild gets delayed. And it's Elden Ring standing alone on this mountaintop, right? God of War is the only one that can compete. With Elden Ring stardom at this point. And if God of War is a complete game, it will compete, right? Because every other game at this point has been not complete at all. Elden Ring is going to take the title because it's the only game that actually works to a full extent, right? That's es essentially why everyone loves Elden Ring. It works. Now, granted, there's some bugs out there still that are a little uneasy. And Lynch Kill, you know that for sure. Um, and Hockey, you know that for sure too. But the whole point is, is that this game is essentially complete, right? God of War needs to take that, you know, take a challenge, right? It needs to have a match, and that would be a perfect time. But my biggest flaw was that God of War was not shown at all. It was almost like it, it seemed like God of War wasn't even coming out. Like, at least make an announcement saying, 
God of War is coming out this year. Like, you know, we don't have any gameplay for you guys today, but we want to make something clear. God of War Ragnarok is coming out in November, or give us a date. You know what? And I heard, saw this online. What would be the biggest flex would be that God of War would put the uh, no, November 11th, right? The date that, that they kept slamming the table that Starfield was coming out. That would have been the biggest flex that Sony could have done. Take the date that Starfield was supposed to release and make a God of War comes out that day and make everyone like, oh my God, Sony just owned Xbox on that. That would have been the biggest flex, but they didn't. And that's kind of a flaw here. You have a chance to make a flex. You didn't do it. And now you're supposed to tell me they're coming out in November. Show me something. Um, Legilica, what's a negative that you had from this event? Yeah, I mean, that's the same one for me. And I will say this overall, I thought this was a pretty um stale if i was going to say state of play overall and it's just because sony didn't have many big guns to show um right you didn't get anything from last of us and i understand uh why they they talk about the remastered um at the game awards and we'll talk about that um but none of that at the state of play and god of war for me a rule of thumb is if i don't see gameplay usually in the summer for a game that's coming out in the winter, the odds are it's going to be delayed. And so I know all the rumors are saying, you know, it's still coming out in November, but we have not seen hard gameplay at all um, of this game. And it's been months since we saw a cinematic, uh, you know, thing on it. It's just hard to believe that it's going to come out in November. And I really, it actually concerns me that we didn't see any gameplay that, Maybe they should delay it. If we don't see gameplay by August, man, I find it really hard to believe that this game will be ready by November. Unless mm -hmm. this is really going locked down into a vault. Um, I just find it hard to believe. I mean, I thought this was a perfect opportunity this week and this weekend to show God of War content um, if the game is coming out in November. Now, that apparently it still is, but... You know, that's the biggest one, because I do think God of War was the biggest gun. Uh, we don't know what's going on with Last of Us or if Naughty Dog has another project going on. We know about the remake, but I'm talking about a new IP. Um, and some of the other guns, again, was a remastered Spider-Man, not a new Spider-Man. So, like, Final Fantasy was strong. Resident Evil remake, yeah. But we just didn't see enough big guns. That kind of makes at least 2022 is going to be pretty flat, especially if God of War gets delayed. Yeah, no, I completely feel you, man. Uh, Haki, what's a uh, what's a negative takeaway you have? Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to jump around a little bit here. So um, I, I agree with both of you guys. The God of War not show, uh, not you know, not showcasing um, what they have coming out. If it is really going to be coming out this year, um, and again, Final Fantasy was um, I thought a, a really good look for them. The the bad takeaway for me, and again, this is a guy that's a first-person shooter, but has branched out into Elden Ring, Breath of the Wild, and a few other games, Mario Striker, I just scooped up today. So um, this is coming from me, where just games that I'm not going to play, and it's just personal to me. And I'm going to bring it up uh, in the Summer Game Fest as well, uh, when we go over that. But it was just some of the weirder games that I wouldn't spend a dime on um the seasons game the sim uh the sim hooking up game or whatever the hell that <laughs> game was um you know stray uh was was a little too weird for me i think you nailed the it. rollerblading yeah. game roller, yeah. roller, roller drum so when i saw the rollerblade game i thought that was hilarious i might actually spend money on that i thought if i ever get a ps5 or please <laughs> i thought that game looked hilarious so i i might i would scoop that before i scoop like the stray or <laughs> any of the other games but um yeah, it was just like I guess they're indie games, right? So, um, just just you know, games that I wouldn't really spend money on, and that's me personally. I know people will buy them, so um, you know, kudos to you guys who who go out and buy it. But that's maybe just the takeaway for me: just games that I wouldn't spend money on. Yeah, I, yeah. I just, and I agree. I mean, like the biggest thing I saw was lack of big exclusives. Like they didn't give us any game that was. You know, I I gave you guys a list, right? Of all these games, the only one that was exclusive big game was resident evil 16 and i was still questioned i don't know if it's a delayed final exclusive. Fantasy. yeah sorry final yeah fantasy. final fantasy final fantasy 16 was a delayed exclusive like it's a full exclusive or it's like only a year or a few months or a few weeks like they didn't give any sort of indication of what exactly it was like i thought hey resident evil 4 remake if that was exclusive but it's not right street fighter 5 uh, 6 it's not 
right? The Callisto Protocol, I thought, hey, that's a big, that's a, you know, dead space. That's a missing genre that a lot of people really wanted to play that game again. That's not, it's exclusive. It's not exclusive. So you're getting a lot of these games that just aren't exclusive and you missed out on big opportunities. God of War, a new Spider-Man game, the announcement of a Last of Us 3, like something like to get people excited for the future. Now we all know they're going to be making a new Last of Us. We all know they're making Spider-Man 2. We know God of War is coming out, but we just don't know when, right? It's just all these yeah. things you missed opportunity wise. And it just got, it felt or like even it new IPs that kind of something, get yeah, something excited. brand new to say, Hey, this is something me, interesting. Yeah. Sony does a good job on a marketing side of getting the games and getting their showcases first that they show it. And it gives kind of the illusion um, that they're exclusive. Yeah. And like you rattled off. They're not. Um, but then like you got to smother in some real exclusives, you know, like it's a good marketing job, but at the end of the day, you know, they're going to be on other consoles too. So, yeah, it, it, you know, it, like you got to sprinkle some of those big guns and it doesn't have to be the same big guns, right? Sony does a good job of developing IPs. We just didn't see really much that it, is enticing. Yeah, and on top of that, it's like, you know, you, you said they're first, right? Usually they set the bar really high, right? With all these yeah. new games and all of a sudden now it's like, all right, the Summer Game Fest has to kind of match that. Nintendo has to match that. Xbox needs to match that. But right now, Sony set the bar low. And so essentially, all these other conferences just have to either meet the bar or be above it. And all of a sudden, it looks like a win for them, right? So Sony kind of yeah. just dropped the ball on that, right? I thought they had the opportunity clearly. Even though we'll get to it. I don't, don't think. Yeah, don't worry. Summer didn't. Game Fest. Yeah. yeah, let's talk about that one now. So let's, let's let's jump to that. Uh, so yeah. Summer Game Fest uh, happened just recently. It happened on Thursday around 2 o'clock Eastern time. Um, it was, to say the least, not that impressive, uh, in, in my opinion. I think, you know, they had, it was a, well, it, you listen, I think Summer Game Fest, you know, the Game Awards do a great job at showing off smaller indie titles and showing, giving platforms the ability to give more. Like, Summer, Summer Game Fest gave me kind of a feeling of what E3 kind of was like, where you see a lot of gameplay components, a lot of things that were slowing down, and I like that stuff. It was just constant just constant game releases, like game showings, right? There was not a lot of BS that was in between, right? It was just showing, showing, showing. And that's what I like, but there wasn't enough, right? So I'm going to take, a, I'm going to ask you guys, and I'll, I'll start first. What was the most exciting announcement that they had? And, and I'm looking at a list of things here. Essentially, my biggest thing that I thought was exciting would be the Modern Warfare 2, uh, basically the, the next game in line. And essentially... This looks like a remake or reimagining of the original story that was created more than a decade ago. And honestly, I was excited to see Modern Warfare come back because Modern Warfare is probably the best COD they've had in years. And as much as some COD fans might be mad that I'm saying that because they are like more of the arcade-ish style, I like the more realistic COD games more. But Modern Warfare was probably the most played Modern Warfare uh, Call of Duty game in... 15 years to be honest with you and i think that you know them continuing the story is a smart idea but one thing i didn't like about it was instead of them like maybe continuing that storyline like further like having price be like an older guy and like continuing or having maybe that in between between like call of duty Modern warfare and Modern warfare 2 they said screw it let's just take some of the best parts of modern warfare call of duty 4 Modern warfare and just reimagine them with like updated characters put ghosts in that squad right from the beginning right silver All that, timeline like, silver timeline type of stuff and and just like we re, let's repackage it it's like infantry ward yep. is saying you know they're like we have the most studios working on this game you literally took the old game rehashed it so you're trying to make this biggest money before my before daddy microsoft shows up and starts chopping heads off right that's essentially what this looks like it's like let's make as much money as possible with this new release and let's catch collect our checks before microsoft starts chopping off heads right and i honestly like yeah you know what i might get this game because it's modern warfare but at the same time i'm still hesitant like i'm sitting like wait wait let's not jump the gun on this mars man i know that it's call of duty modern warfare and it's like you love that you love modern warfare but it might just be the same rehash crap that we've seen before so i'm i like the announcement I like Modern Warfare, the Modern Warfare 2 2022, but I'm a little hesitant to jump on the bandwagon right away. But, uh, Haki, what was your biggest positive that came about from the Summer Game Fest? 
Yeah, so I thought there was um, <clears throat> I, I thought that the Summer Game Fest was was good. Uh, could it have been better? Of course it could have been. Uh, but I thought some of the games, uh, some of the indie games, some of the smaller studios still came through with some good stuff. Um, obviously, Modern Warfare, um, I think, you know, we're, we're probably all, regardless, of, we're, we're, we're going to cop it. Um, if it's $70, it's going to hurt, you know. But, yeah. yeah, it's going to um, be. It's it, going to be. It, it probably will be. But um, for the for the smaller... Well, for like people, 90 you could get the beta. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Like that. No for 120 that, you can get captain price tattooed on your ass <laughs> no, i'm just i'm not gonna do that 70 is stretching it um but yeah i mean again the smaller studios i think they still came through with some cool looking games um stormgate looked cool um there was a couple that I, that I was actually uh kind of excited about so um dark tide which is an xbox exclusive that kind of looked pretty cool um you can play with a, a few of your friends and it's like a zombie ish kind of game it looked pretty cool and then one that uh jumped out at me i used to play uh marvel ultimate alliance with my brother and friends now if the marvel midnight i think it's called marvel midnight run if that's anything like ultimate alliance i'm pretty hyped for it i didn't really i, I don't know what kind of feeling i got from it but i thought it was you know pretty cool so just you know, maybe some some of the cool games that, that I thought were were a positive from the smaller studios. Yeah, I feel you there, man. I mean, some of these games were interesting, but yeah, it was it could have been better for sure. But uh, Angelical, what's a positive that you saw? From this? Um, I'm trying to remember the name. Is it Callisto or Yeah, the Callisto Protocol. That one was cool. Yeah, I actually thought that was intriguing, um, and probably the more intriguing one that I saw uh, with that Dead Space horrifying vibe. Um, it looked intriguing, um, and they showed a little bit of gameplay and not too many guns. They showed they showed pretty much one gun, but a gravity aspect to it where you can pick things up and throw it into whatever. Um, and then they showed like you know like some of the gory deaths uh, that are in that game. Um, but it felt you know it, it felt like a, a it could be a strong horror type game. Um, and when it comes to those kind of like sci-fi horror, sci-fi zombie type stuff. There's a lot of misses. Um, so, you know, if this game looked like it has a chance to pull it off, seeing some gameplay, which is always good. I always like seeing actual gameplay, not just cinem you know, cinematics. So you can see how a game kind of looks. Um, I know it doesn't tell the full story, but at least it showed you some of that. And for me, that gets a little bit of brownie points. So I'm going to go uh, with Kalisto. Yeah, listen, I think that was an interesting game for sure. I, I actually played the original Dead Space Actually, sorry, it was Dead, Dead Space 2 I played. Um, and uh, that w it was a horrifying game. I mean, like, it the game is, like, it's just intense. I, I mean, it, I don't think it, like, breaks your soul, but, like, it, like, you feel tense when you play that game. You feel anxiety because around every corner, like, something's going to come out and kill you. And you're just in that spot where, like, you know, some of these weapons they have, like, all the gravity-based guns and physics-based guns are really, really interesting in that in those games. So... Uh, I thought this is a really cool thing to continue and bring back a, a dead space or a genre that is, you know, kind of not had a lot of games that have broken the barrier like Dead Space and Resident Evil have done and, and Silent Hill, obviously. Um, but they have, I think people are itching for another big horror game to build that Silent Hill spot. Um, and I think Callisto Protocol seems like that one too. Now, with the positive always comes the negative. My negative or my, my biggest like disappointment or worst announcement. Um, our big worst takeaway i think would be there's not really a lot of stuff that i feel like i want to play i mean I, at the end of the day this was this is a great thing to, to show off indie titles um but i think i'm kind of going along the same same way that hockey felt with the sony state of play there's a lot of games here that I just don't feel like playing i mean i i think yeah you know what seeing you mutant ninja turtles uh you know the the over the top you know you want to play that man side platform three? i mean yeah listen like it's a it's a classic arcade style game trust yeah. me like i know a lot of people like i know the angry joe show is big on that game they always talk about can't wait to play that but like i don't know man i i just feel like there's there was so many missed opportunities and i i i i watch a lot of content creators and they do their overall reviews of you know the summer game fest and i think most people were feeling like this was just boring. It wasn't enough to go with. And I, I listen, I, I'm not like picky. I'm not really picky when it comes to my, my game conferences. I just want to see things that intrigue me. Not saying like, you know, uh, it has to be everything has to be a gun game. I'm not saying that, but like bring out some stuff that is going to like 
kind of make people like, oh, that's that's interesting. I can't, I can't, I want to try that. I want to see what this game is. Like, you know, Game Fest is supposed to be where, you know, all those game titles that aren't solely exclusive get a chance to show out. Like, it, that was what E3 was for, right? It was for all those other than exclusive titles can really see what you can do, what they can do. And essentially, you know, one of the biggest announcements they came out with was Gotham Knights or Goat Simulator 3. Like, that. that's the that's the varying in which we're getting it. Like, I, I don't... There just wasn't consistency. There wasn't, like, stuff that, like, made... They, like, they would fly through stuff constantly and, like, fly through a game that was interesting and then stay solid slow on games that just weren't. And I was just, like, there wasn't enough here to get me intrigued. And I was really excited for this event. It didn't match my excitement that I had. Um, so, Haki, what, what was the biggest... I like maybe disappointment or worst takeaway that you had from the summer game fest. Yeah, so let me just start with if anyone in chat or anyone who is watching this, if you have not played Goat Simulator, Goat Simulator, it is a hilarious game to spend whatever it is ten dollars on or whatever it is. Uh, it is hilarious, and you should try it. It was a huge laugh out of it. So I was, I was laughing when. Uh, they show Goat Simulator, but going back to uh, you know the indie games that I just I just wouldn't I wouldn't play. Um, there was a lot of them, and the few that jumped out at me where I was like I definitely won't play that was like one was called American Arcada uh, Cuphead. Oh, and Cup, I Cuphead, don't like D Cuphead, man. Cuphead DLC. I mean, I, I I haven't played it. Cuphead is like that flat 2D platformer, and a lot of people are. It's, a, it's an arcade style of game and and it's like metal slug basically um but yeah. no i listen hockey i completely i feel you I, from a lot of people really like it it's, it's difficult it's very difficult it's so, very uh, hard it, it just looked weird you know? I don't yeah know. it's like an 80s cartoon I, type thing. i i honestly yeah, and i listen man i feel you probably the biggest gross thing i saw was like saints row like they had a whole thing called a boss a boss factory it was just like <laughs> hey, this is stupid yeah. <laughs> this is dumb like what, what are we watching right now? Um, but no, so keep going, hockey. I don't want to cut you off. No, I mean that, that was pretty much it. It was just it was you know, and again, this is it's just personal. Like I, I just I wouldn't. I would rather spend time playing other video games, maybe more video games that interest me, than than play the indie games that are just you know a little too weird for me, or you know, for for a certain genre or something. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. You know, that's that's where I'm going with it. just too many indie games that are a little too weird for me. I feel you. Uh, Langella Kill, what was the biggest disappointment, worst takeaway you had from the Summer Game Fest? Yeah, I'm going to agree with both of you. Um, I felt the same way after the Sony. Um, I felt the same way watching this after, as I did after the Sony State of Play and that I just felt it was stale. Um, uh, there just wasn't many games and the call of duty one even though you know i was and i'm still intrigued by it hearing about it being a reimagined pretty much new universe uh with the same characters um does kind of pop a red flag it gives me those silver timeline nightmares um kind of vibe to it so you know just all that mixed together and I think indie games deserve opportunities and chances. I mean, this is not like it has to be a big AAA game and every, you know. But like you, like what you guys were saying, it was just, it's not that it was a bunch of indie games. It was just like, there were just some weird indie games that I just don't see myself spending money and time on. Uh, maybe they are good uh, and maybe we'll be wrong, but just nothing caught my eye. It, it feels like Summer Game Fest was like a culmination of games that you either were drunk or you were like high playing like it's like those are those games that's like you're just like you you want to laugh you want to have a big laugh let's just let's just tune in goat simulator 3 and let's just have a laugh like you know what i mean like it didn't didn't come off to me as being like wow i, I can't wait to play this game like i like none of those games came yeah, off to me maybe put 30 plus yeah, hours callisto, into this. callisto protocol seemed like that game but that was already shown in the state of play the my, modern warfare was like the biggest thing i saw that was like hey this is interesting but I also kind of was like, I said it before, I'm a little like uneasy because I'm like, this is just a copy and paste job. Like, and it's like, I'm not too keen on those because I, I get a little nervous when you copy and paste and maybe you adjust the things into a worse state than what it originally was. I was like, when you're trying to make a complete comparison to like Modern Warfare, a uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, like 
it might turn out bad. Like if that's what you're doing, like you're trying to match this game to that legendary game, it might go badly in your favor. Sometimes it's better for you to create something brand new because then you can't make a comparison. But uh, let's we got to move forward here. This next story is a personal one because this involves a lot of drama going on with YTube, with one of my favorite content creators, Act Man, um, and. We're going to talk about just some general, like, just general reactions to the story itself. And I'll just do a brief little overview for everyone who here who has, who does not know about it. Basically, Actman is an extremely, like, popular and prominent YouTuber. Has more than a million people subscribed to his channel, including myself. Um, now, basically, it has all started, and it's ironic, it all started with a horrifyingly bad Ellen review uh, Ellen Ring review from Quantum, or really, I'll, I'm not even gonna. I don't even want to say his full name. QTV, I'll call it. Um, basically, because he is a well-known copyright striker, essentially, and what he does basically um, is that anyone that talks trash about him, he will copyright strike them to oblivion. And one of the key people into this entire story was a 17-year-old YouTuber named Mischief, who basically had ragged on him, and QTV basically threatened his channel. And said, hey, if you don't take down this video, I'm going to cancel you. And essentially, all this was, you know, it scared him to take it down. Big YouTubers like Review Tech USA, as well as others, went out to support Mischief and called out QTV. Actman basically made a video. It all started really where he made a, a video called um, Elden Ring Hot Takes, where essentially he took a lot of dumb ideas or dumb takes that people had about Elden Ring, really all like their, their negative feelings toward Elden Ring, and kind of picked them apart and said how dumb they were. And he had like a run 20 minute hit piece on QTV saying his review was the dumbest of all. And he kind of picks it apart and says why it's dumb. So essentially QTV basically copy, copyright striked him. And basically he wrote a, a you know, act man uh, wrote a copy, a, a kind of like a response video to him. And it kind of ticked him off to a point where he actually contacted act man's mom um, and basically indirectly or, or maybe directly threatens his mom and threatens Actman with legal action if he does not take down his videos or doesn't stop with this stuff. And Actman says, all right, I'm going nuclear. So he basically does all this research. He makes a video where he goes into not only QTV's actions and how horrifying they are, but goes into why to not really reacting well enough to go after QTV and really cancel his channel. Uh, essentially, QTV was doing a lot of you know, a lot of bullying, a lot of spamming, a lot of doxing, as well as abuse of the copyright system. And Actman's channel, because of he basically went after him, he he got demonetized. Essentially, he made some tweets that were satire in nature, and uh, Y2 basically took that as ammunition, demonetized his entire channel, which essentially fires him from YouTube. And having one point around five to seven million people subscribing to you, you're making a pretty well good living for yourself. And essentially now you can't make a single dime off of any view that you get. And obviously now, right now, currently in action, this movement to basically call for the, the hashtag uh, act, uh, justice for act man is trending worldwide for like nearly a week. Right. Uh, and basically a lot of YouTubers are coming out and criticizing YTube for basically not acting in the right way. And, still keeping QTV on YouTube while demonetizing Actman. And generally, I just wanted to ask you guys thoughts. And, you know, uh, I, I think the biggest thing, and, and my opinion is, I think this is pretty hypocritical. I think the fact that, you know, Y2 basically is going to pick and choose who they want to go after for certain situations is obviously, we all know the reason why uh, Actman's channel was demonetized. I mean, you watch the video, uh, it, 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 he picked them apart. He picked apart QTV, picked apart the community guidelines, and he was, you know, he did kind of the work a lot of people were kind of questioning on why is it that certain people get, get hit the book with and certain people don't. And I think right now it's kind of, we don't know what's going to happen to Actman's channel. As in, some people think that, hey, with all this global attention, people might persuade YouTube to maybe bring back his channel, which I think in my opinion is the right thing to do. And get rid of QTV. But we've seen before that conglomerates don't always follow the common sense solution. A lot of times they play the bully and they, they stick to their guns. And I, I, me personally, 
I would be upset at this. Axman, when I saw the news that his channel was demonetized and that he thought this was going to be his last days on YouTube and all of his content videos would be taken down, it hurt. It honestly hurt. And I, I mean, I, I became a content creator because of because of content creators like Actman, like Andrew Angry Joe Show. Because I like, I love watching their content, and I want to bring joy to people that like video games, like me, like us, and have them watch and enjoy themselves, right? So seeing a person like this getting demonetized, getting their basically all their life's work, essentially life's work, but seven years of work getting thrown down for tweets is is kind of ridiculous, it, and it, and I think that that's kind of my opinion on this, and. You know, at the end of the day, I, I just think that you that YTube, geez, YTube needs to do the right thing, right? Just bring back his channel. QTV should not be. And, and listen, you want to make an example and say, listen, we're gonna we're gonna suspend your channel and for a little while to teach you a lesson to kind of like ease off. Like we're we're the hand that feeds you, okay? But QTV should not be on 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 YTube. It should not be there. Like everything he's done, that's not good for your brand. And that's not good for anyone that's a content creator on Y2. Like, that should not be a, a thing that's allowed to happen. And I just want to get your opinions about this. You don't have to go too long. If you don't know much about the situation, it's not a big deal. But, Angelica, I want to go to you first. What is your opinion? What are your react general reactions here? Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of, of the Act Man uh, and his content. Um, the only thing about Act Man is sometimes he. He crossed the, I'm not gonna say cross, but he walks up to that line. Um, and that satire tweets, and you mentioned it, they were definitely satire. Um, but just to be fair, um, in the satire tweet, he was talking about jokingly doxing YouTube employees, um, uh, similar to what, you know, QTV did to him and his family. Um, it was definitely satire, but it was the ammo that YouTube or YTube, excuse me, uh, needed. Uh, to, to throw the book at him. And, you know, Ackman called Y2 corrupt, uh, you know, in some of his messages before he, they, you know, th threw his channel, pretty much demonetized it. And unfortunately, Y2 is kind of proving him right. Um, when they say that they're corrupt, he's pretty much saying that, you know, they act on certain people and, and others they don't. And it's exactly what's happened. Um, they act hard on him, which I understand, you know, I think it's satire, but they wanted to throw the book at him to say, hey, we can come hard on you. But then why is Quantum QTV, whatever uh, that loser's name is, why is he still on the channel? Like, why is he still on UI too? Right. I mean, he presented all this evidence to you and, you know, he deleted a bunch of messages and tweets. Actman also deleted that tweet about doxing uh, y -tube employees. Um but they use that against them. Um, so again, it's who who are they going to do guidelines against and who they're not going to. I don't think that they will bring him back. I think they will stick with their guns, um, unfortunately. Um, hopefully that does change. But, you know, this is not a good look for YTube. And, and I, you know, I really like <laughs> YTube. I, it's weird saying. I want to just say it because, unfortunately, we say it because a lot of content creators who spoke about this Zach Man stuff um, had their videos demonetized. So it's just kind of just showing a heavy hand. Uh, it's just not a good brand look at all uh, for content creators. Um, it, it's just not, a, I just don't understand it. And if they want it to be tough on Act Man, then you gotta also be tough on QTV. Um, at least that uh, would me make more sense than kind of showing that you are being a hypocrite. Yeah. Uh, Haki, I know that you aren't too familiar with Actman and the situation. I know this was kind of news to you, but generally just what from your hurt. I mean, uh, what were some things that you think, like reaction wise? What do you think? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, you, you were the one that sent me the um, that, that video that um, he kind of ripped into to QTV. And, uh, you know, if any of the listeners, if, if you haven't, if you know a little bit about the story, if you'd didn't know about the story at all that one video will literally almost tell you everything you need to know about the story that's how in-depth it is um you know take an hour of your day uh, and watch the video it is pretty crazy i mean he goes into depth about uh you know 
this this guy QTV and and how he is like evading bans and, and creating accounts and also he's just not a good like human being you know <laughs> he's like off like doing things you know um, tweeting things that were like homophobic and stuff like that you know he was doing some just not good human things other than just attacking people that um, really bring a ton of views and viewers to YouTube. You know, that's how YouTube makes their money is, you know, someone who has 1.7 million subscribers, um, you know, they got commercials on the channel or, or you know, it, it brings people to YouTube. So um, having Actman just absolutely obliterate this guy and bring up an outrageous amount of proof and then him getting his channel demonetized uh, and pretty much kicking them off YouTube and letting this other loser, as Langella Kill says, stay there. Um, after like calling his mom and like doing all this weird childish stuff it's just i mean it's it, like you guys said it's hypocritical um it, yeah the, it doesn't make sense yeah yeah i mean the the, the handbook that Ackman you know brought out and, and was ripping into to y tube um it, it was it's very blatant that qtv should not be on youtube ever again um, yeah yeah i mean that's the bottom that's like the base like like i said before like the base thing that should happen here is QTV should not be on, on this on this network, right? At the end of the day, like you demonetize Actman because of some tweets he said. You know, QTV did that and more. Like, it, like he did well more than what you would need to get removed. And the bottom line was that his previous channel was already banned, and you essentially you're not allowed to create a brand new one and pretend like your last channel was okay. Like you can't do that, right? That's a that's literally a rule. So. That's just kind of some things. Like I said, this is a personal one, so obviously I took a lot of time on it, but um, we need to move forward. Uh, biggest thing I want to talk about today is we have just a quick little story. I, I just want to talk about quick. Uh, officially, Xbox is coming out with a new Game Pass app that's going on Samsung TVs. This is a pretty big deal. Um, one, because you can actually play Game Pass games on a controller without actually having a game, uh, an Xbox system. Now, I essentially this is like we kind of talked about this last week they were trying to make a kind of a fire stick device they use for TVs but now they're just saying you know what it's too difficult to get that to work but let's just get an app on our TVs instead now I'll just do a quick look because we have a big story the next topic is the biggest one of the show but the big thing I kind of want to get across from this is I am not necessarily against the fact that Xbox is trying to use like a app to get game pass because they're just trying to increase their revenue from game pass getting more people to just own game pass and be able to, to subscribe to it um am i against it no do am i gonna really invest myself into trying this on a game pass app rather than just playing it on my console probably not like i, I i'm not gonna really care like i mean like i play x cloud and, and not often but the, on my phone it's difficult i can't imagine now from your TV, it being really yeah. much better. I, I, your phone has you know wire has wireless connection as well as satellite. Like your 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 TV is using your Wi-Fi, and it's not made to be a console device. But if it works, that's great. If it doesn't, okay, I kind of expected that. So, good luck to that one. I'm not really gonna be focused too much on it. I'll try it to see how it works, but I I, mean, I don't know, man. I, I don't feel like really that big of a deal, but. Do you guys have opinions on this one? Uh, I'll let you guys open floor here. What do you guys think? Yeah. Uh, Joe, kill you go first. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I just like it's like yeah, you know, I like it. I guess you know if they can make it work, but I have big questions on you know games like Halo and and you know any type of online game that you need <laughs> top notch. Yeah. Internet, the internet connection, right? Uh, that that's my biggest concern i think playing you know campaign games or you know strategy games uh where you take turns and stuff like that um i think it, if they can get the technology to work it'll be fine but it's those multiplayer uh you know high intensity games that i think could be an issue yeah hockey any uh, any thoughts on this yeah so um, i'm kind of i'm gonna kind of go the other way a little bit i mean I, I think it's now let's say in a perfect world it works right like it's it's a perfect product and it works i think it'd be a good look um because let's say let's say you know someone who has ps5 
but doesn't want to spend five hundred dollars on a or six hundred dollars on a on an Xbox, you spend you know new money on this TV, the Samsung TV that you can play your PS5 on, but also go on Game Pass uh, and play the biggest exclusives that Game Pass can uh, you know offer up. I think you know I think it would be pretty cool. Um, again, it needs to work though, kind of like you guys said. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, and I don't know if I saw a commercial for this, but it said something about like no storage or like it, you don't it's, need a it's all cloud storage. storage. It's all cloud yeah. storage. And, no, and yeah, there's I, no limit. But my only but my only question is, you know, console processors. We talk about the Xbox Series X has the highest teraflops on the market. Right. Your TV is not a game console. So the question I have is. How much does the power run through your TV to use for an app? Like how effect, like how does this work? You know what I mean? Like how does this essentially yeah. work for higher processing games? Like, like Elden Ring, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? Like how do you, can you play Elden Ring on this, on your TV? Like, is that possible? Can you play a multiplayer game? Like, like Angelical said, can you play Halo on here? Like, does it work? If, if it works, then like, that's a cool thing. Like I agree with you, hockey. I think that the selling point for somebody to say, Hey, listen, you don't, you don't need an Xbox to play game Xbox games. Just get, get game pass, uh, ultimate pay 15 99 a month and you're golden. Right. And essentially that just increases Microsoft's bottom dollar. But I want to see if this stuff actually works or, you know, I get hyped about it, but I agree with you guys. It's a, it's an interesting concept. We'll see what happens. Biggest story of the show is the Xbox showcase, and we are going to be streaming this on Marsman Gaming. So please make sure you tune into our stream, and we'll have some live reactions to the to the stream itself. Um, now, there's a lot of things that's happening Sunday, June 12th, around 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p uh, 10 uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Time, and there's actually going to be a second event that is occurring. June 14th and it will it, apparently rumors have come out officially that this event will be around 95 minutes in duration which is a lot of time compared it's actually the com the, the combined of Game Fest and Sony State of Play combined is what the equivalent of this show is and I think that is a pretty big deal now granted I, I think it's because you're adding in Bethesda and, and Xbox and there's a lot of now especially with the all the purchasing they have so many different studios that have to show something, right? So I, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not surprised it's a long one, but apparently it's going to be a lot of gameplay. And the fact that you're showing a second event on that, that next coming Tuesday, that's solely gameplay and discussing with the developers what they're seeing. That's also a good thing. However, the topics that this conference can cover ranges from all over the place. I mean, you're getting possible things from Halo, Starfield, Ori, Senua Saga, Perfect Dark, Sea of Thieves, New Gears of War. The, the things are endless right now. And the biggest things I want to ask you guys is, you know, what, first off, what do you want to see from this conference? And like, what announcements would you be excited to see? Like, so what, they kind of have a combined question. Like, what would you want to see from this conference? I'll start first. I'm a big Halo fan. Um, I want to see this new battle royale talked about apparently season three will be discussed this battle royale this tatanka playlist that everyone's been hyped up about will be discussed apparently rumors are all all over the place right now i want to see season three because apparently for every halo fan out there season three is supposed to be almost like the reset point that halo is supposed to hit where it gets the updated ranking system that it's supposed to be a lot more efficient the game is supposed to get all of its bug fixes completely done. You're going to get, obviously, co-op campaign is hitting flights this month. And uh, actually, being probably started next month, but probably later this month. And you're going to get Forge. Is, is the flights are coming in September. So, Season 3 looks like the re-emergence of Halo Infinite that should have been the start. So, it's like Season 3 has to be hit the ground running. So, I do want to see some things from Season 3 for Halo Infinite because they need some hype to bring this game back to the forefront. Now, I think it's it's a good game. I think Season 2 has been great so far. There's a lot of game modes to play. I just think that the Halo fans who are not so easy to, to be swayed to come back need something to kind of say, this looks like a really cool season. I, want, I can't wait to play it. I want to see what more from this. And I think that would be a really big thing 
for Microsoft because everyone's looking for these other games. Halo is the one big game you have out right now that needs that support and it needs to show something. Uh, Legella Kill, what is the thing you want to see from this Xbox showcase? Yeah, I mean, the Halo Season 3 is interesting, but I'm actually going to give an overall take. Um, Phil Spencer and Xbox needs to see a return on investment from Bethesda. Um, that's my biggest takeaway that I'm hoping to see. And that's good gameplays, intriguing stories that we get from these Bethesda games. Um, because Microsoft has put a lot of money into purchasing Bethesda and making these purchases for IPs. And we have to be very honest. Um, we're still waiting to see that return on investment, um, especially from Bethesda. And so this is an important showcase more than the, you know, the Halo one, in my opinion, for Bethesda. I need to see, you know, I want to see the Starfield game be intriguing. Like we get those cinematics that look really cool. Right. But, like what kind of game is this going to be like that is still the big question mark so i want to see gameplay from them i want to see gameplay from other the Beth bethesda titles this has to be a big not just boom here's the title of this next game that's coming in two years right we want to see some progress on some of these ips that bethesda has been making because i mean if not now when i agree I feel you, man. I, I And I think there's a lot of things that they can show. They definitely need to show up big. Hockey, what is something that you want to see from this showcase? Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to pull from both of you guys. So um, like Langelic Hill said, it's really about uh, not just, um, you know, the movie that they show us every single time. It's about gameplay. You know, they delayed Starfield and Redfall. Those were like going to be the two biggest games that were coming out exclusive for Xbox. So if they don't show us true gameplay from those games, um, you know, it's it's not going to be a, a great showing. Um, so with that out of the way, I mean, I think that's extremely important. Actual straight up gameplay from the two biggest IPs that they were going to be coming out with. Other than that, I know we're all huge Halo fans. So, you know, I had the hope and the idea that this battle royale would be, you know, whatever, a hundred players on the open world map that the campaign was on, including chieftains and elites and, and, you know, uh, you know, uh, Halo, uh, everything that, that you love about Halo, but just throw it into a call of duty battle royale scene. Um, I hope that, I hope there's gameplay from that, or at least they announce that. And then, yeah, Forge and uh, co-op campaign, pretty much what a Halo game is. Yeah. Um, they should they should make Halo what it is, like bring yeah. back Halo, you know? So uh, it, it, they can nail this. They really can if they show us gameplay and they really show us what Halo Infinite was supposed to be um, a year ago. So um, that's what I'm going to say about that. So uh, the other thing I, I'll, uh, I'll kind of mention, uh, the next big the question, sorry, is, uh, you know, bold takes you know mars man gaming you know we we like to go big and we're, we're gonna shoot for the stars here right we you know i made my reaction videos to the sony state of play that's located in the description below if you want to go see that live first we just talked about the summer game fest we didn't get to give our bold takes of what were things we wanted to see but guess what xbox has a showcase and we need to if we were going to be the you know phil spencer we're going to be his you know his his kind of his aides his his back in his mind, his his morals, his his guys, his go to guys. What would be the biggest bold take that you can make here to say this would be a big splash for Microsoft to drop? And I, I technically have two, but I'm gonna like say one. I'll let you guys give yours, and if you guys didn't say it, then I'll drop mine as a second one. First one I'm gonna say, and this is a big, big bold take. Double Fine, who is the group that makes Psychonauts two. We'll either make one a remaster of Banjo Kazooie, which seems more likely, but I want them to see a new Banjo Kazooie 3. Banjo Tooie 3 will be announced at this game showcase. Though I double find guys who make Psychonauts 2, they killed it with their that game. It was a great game. Kinda came off to me as a great, like over the top platformer, similar to what Odyssey and similar to what Banjo Kazooie is like. But now you actually have some guys who are good at that stuff. Give it 
to them, they will make a Banjo Chewy 3, and that would be awesome. All right, so let's go Haki first. Haki, bold take. What do you got? So my bold take is going to be nothing that I mentioned before. I think my bold take is going to be uh, a new Gears of War game. Okay, uh, that's that's possible. I like that. I hope, I hope something. Possible. I hope something that comes out with that because I miss Gears of War. I haven't played. Gears oh my of War god, we had some crazy ass in games in Gears you know, of War. Gears dude. of War is fun, dude. So I'm going. There's going to be a new Gears of War game. All right. Is this Gear Six or is this a? Because I I'm hearing rumors that there was a remaster of the old okay, ones. I don't care about remasters. I I just I don't want remasters. I don't care about remasters. <laughs> I want a brand new game. No silver timeline. No <laughs> oh, let's take this game and just make it better and charge them eighty dollars. I want a brand new game, brand new story, and full like the full game. No nothing else. I want a full brand new game. Gears of War. <laughs> I got you. Gear six. Bold take. Legend oh. kill. Bold take. What do you think? I think uh, Fable rises from the dead. Oh, no, Fable's back. In no case. Um, I think it'd be super bold if they give a release date, but I won't go that oh far. My but God. I do think Fable rises from the dead and makes an appearance in this showcase. Dude, that would be crazy. My final bold take, guys. If you have any more, we can add them to my list. Halo the Endless will be teased at this event. The new story campaign that they've been talking about. Joseph Staten returns to the fold as a writer for Halo. He, the original OG finally gets to write a story again. My bull take is that they will tease the Endless. Give us a little snippet cut of a possible villain you might see. Or something that will get people like hyped that Halo is going to add a new story. And they're going to say whether it's coming to Season 3 or possibly Season 4. But something. They give us an Endless teaser trailer because apparently halo is going to be at this event let's see it what do you got you guys have any more bull takes no uh -huh. i think we covered we got we gotta wait and see that's the big question you gotta wait and see last question and this comes from our discord and like like i say on the other show if you want to uh, drop us some questions please make sure you drop a, a thumbs up and subscribe and join us on discord that's located in the description below because we try to answer as many Discord questions as we can. And we try to do it in a timely manner. Only a few minutes remaining. So we got to only get to one to two maybe. So let's go to the first one. The question here is. What's the purpose of a Last of Us remake for PS5? And the big thing about this is that. Uh, Last of Us is getting a part. It's called Part 1. It's essentially a remastered edition. To the original Last of Us game that came out in 2013. The last remaster I had gotten was for the PS4 back in 2014, back by I graduated high school, so that's clearly a long time ago. Um, now, this is basically going to be rumored for and officially was announced for September or most likely for $70. So the question is, is, you know, should this, should they charge? I think that's the big question. First off, why do you make a remake in the first place? And secondly, do you charge at the maximum price? And that's generally where the debate goes and i and i'll give my opinion about this first i honestly you should give a remastering of last of us one it's a fan it's my favorite of the last of a series um it's a great great game it's a masterpiece if you call if you want to give it a, a title it's a masterpiece um and ps5 has one of the it's 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 all right there with a, a series x and graphics right last of us 2 looked amazing so if you can yeah. get into that last of, last of us 2 look like that's that's fantastic um, do I think it should be cost $70? No. And I've been consistent. I've said that for every remake out there, Resident Evil 4 remake, Resident Evil 3, 2, whatever remakes you want to make should not be the full price. It's a recreation of a game that was already made, just was touched up with makeup. Like, so it shouldn't be $70 right now. They still do it, but it shouldn't be $70. But do I think they should make it? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's a fantastic game and it's a masterpiece bringing it back to the to higher fidelity is is kind of a, a no-brainer at this point but legit kill I, I know hockey didn't really play the first one so you didn't really have too much opinions on this but legit kill you also uh had experience in this what do you think yeah it's a money grab <laughs> i mean let's just call it what it is we know a bunch of game companies do this uh we've seen it with a lot of all-time titles uh that they've remastered it 
and they usually charge it at full price at that time. Um, this is actually kind of a more of an egregious one, and I have to take the shots at Sony for this because it's not just seventy dollars. They're actually going to give different bundle packages. So, what Last of Us does this remastered is they're going to bolster up the graphics. They're going to re-enhance the controls of the game, and they're going to make the fighting. Uh, because anyone who remembers playing Last of Us One, the combat is a little stiff. Yep. Um, so they are going to enhance um, the combat um, from from what I heard. Um, so that is the seventy dollar price. Now there is a ninety dollar price, and there is a hundred twenty dollar price, similar to the Fallout uh, hey, stuff. Do, now do when you, you, pay do you get the kiss, Ellie? Is that what the Twenty, I believe you get souvenirs. Oh, um, so they're going to throw in. I don't remember exactly what it was, but uh, to me, it's it's it's, it's a greedy. little too greedy. It's a little too on the nose greedy. Um, now, I do understand kind of where the remaster is coming because everyone who knows also that the show, last of a show on yep. HBO is coming. And, you know, this is kind of a good idea to kind of, hey, get last of us back into everybody's mind before the show but there is some grubbiness going on in this especially with the three price things and i know the last of us diehards are gonna buy and they're gonna buy the 120 to get those souvenirs and not, I just not think, me man i mean i ain't no yeah. but i just feel that it's a little too on the nose uh you know a little too greedy uh for naughty dog and sony um but again, we've seen them, you know, we've seen a lot of great titles be remastered and they are. And the only good thing about it, it I haven't heard that they're changing like the story and the voice yeah, acting. Please, Leia, please don't. That's the one thing that I, too many games screw up in doing that. Um, so that's the only good part. But like you said, come on, it, it's, it's, it, it's a little. Listen, confusing. if you want to decrease that, like let's cut it in half. Let's go $40 for the game. Just remastered game. Nothing else. Uh, sixty dollar for the slightly upgraded, and then go like seventy or eighty for the souvenir edition. Like, oh, that makes more sense to me. Like, you know, I when I first got the PS4, I had the PS Plus, and they gave me the remastered Last of Us remaster when I first got it. Like, they gave it to me. So you're telling me, so now I gotta pay seventy dollars for a remaster again for the PS5 version, like? You know, like, it just tells me that you're just, like, like Lenjilka said, just greediness. It's just a lot of greed here. So, last question is going to be pretty brief. It's pretty, just for me, basically. Uh, uh, what do you want to add anything, add anything on that? Because I know you no, don't really... The only thing I would add is that I'm never buying a bundle after Battlefield ever. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Battlefield. <laughs> Battlefield. Oh, my God. Yeah. We, we could all we could even talk about that later on in another yeah. show because they have a brand new update. Apparently, fixes things, but to, to nobody. To nobody, but I don't care about it. um, last question for the show. The I was asked, uh, when are we gonna get a Lego Star Wars playthrough with the Mars Man crew? Um, it, it's a tough one. Uh, I, it's a multiplayer game, the possibility, uh, full price, not so sure, just because I don't know how long I'm gonna yeah, play they put that, that game. Game Pass, it can get if it's it on can Game Pass. Happen. Sure. You know, if, and if the Mars Band crew were to ship in and buy merch and donations, then maybe, maybe. But like a whole point, <laughs> the whole point is, is that it's a full pipe price point. I I don't know how much how much I'd play it. You know what I mean? Like I, I feel like I want it when I buy a game, I'm gonna play it that a lot of that game, unless it's Battlefield. Then I I mean I mean it's always a certain point. It does that wasn't worth the bucks, but I try my very best to play it as much as possible. But. I, maybe if it's on Game Pass, I will probably play. I'll do a stream with the Marsman crew. We'll, play, we'll do be we'll be fighting some some droids and stuff. So, uh, but that, I feel like that's it. I feel like listen. Thank you guys for watching. It was a blast uh, though, talking about all this stuff. A lot of great topics, and you know, please make sure if you haven't done so yet, drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And please make sure you join us on social media on Twitter, Discord, and our on our TikTok. And all those are located in the description below. Anything else, guys, before we sign off for the night? Not a lot of topics covered. Uh, you know, a lot of content talked about. And, uh, you know, another great uh, news news week. Yeah, man. Yeah. Mars Band News. This is Mars Band from Mars Band Gaming. Signing off for the night. Peace out, guys. <laughs>